Alright guys, welcome back to the the tutorial about architectural visualization. This is the day number two. If you want to follow us, check the day number one and get into it. So, thank you again for watching my video and today we'll speak about or we'll talk about materials. How do they work in V-Ray and how can we trick them so we get nice and realistic results okay I'm gonna create a simple scene okay just a simple scene something like this okay a box and convert it to an editable poly pick this polygon and insert it okay so something like this and then extrude with negative value sorry just a little bit okay nice now I'm gonna make it bigger just a little bit because I found it's so way too small. Okay, I'm gonna move a little bit here like this. Okay, and a little bit like this. So we have enough room to work with. Just something like this, rapidly and roughly. Okay, deactivated. Back to the creation tab. I'm gonna create a box with the auto grid just deactivate the grid okay something like this change its color to something purple and move it something like this okay do it and I'm gonna create a torus knot here and move it up okay and some somewhat like this and finally the standard and the sphere okay our scene is now ready okay press M and choose V-Ray material and copy it three times okay I'm gonna name this one blue okay and choose this color something like black blue um, between blue and gray this one orange wish red wish reddish orange wish I don't know how do you say that but something like this and name it orange the final one will be green and choose a nice green okay uh, this type of green and okay now I'm gonna zoom into it and move a little bit what do we need to do also is to reduce a little bit the size which are very big Okay, um, move them down. No, here we can see them all, and here for or to the modify panel, select all these three here. Okay, verts here, verts here, verts here, and verts here. Move. I'm sorry, sorry about that, but. something like this okay I maybe get this size of sphere a little bit down okay and move the whole thing something like this so render uh, I activated uh, indirect illumination with really uh, basic values and really low values because just for testing okay and move it a little bit higher also the box so okay something like this pretty nice and now I can start speaking about the materials really simple I'm gonna explain how does this works how does this works and pretty simple for the refresh the reflection 
I got color here and this color will variate from black to white so you can choose any type of color and it will use the dark and, and so if I change the black from bl the black to white and render my scene click here to show by background and render my scene that's what you get a really reflective object it's mirror like okay and this is the this color controls the amount of reflection used by used by the the object so for an example you always get this sort of thing because it reflects this the the spot here or uh, the, the the box here so if I ch if you change another color like a blue and render again you'll get something like this but the sphere is here as you can see it but it's 100 percent reflective so it will reflect all what's around okay and that's pretty cool so for using chromes etc and we hear a lot of people saying that we don't have to use V-Ray materials, uh, standard materials instead of V-Ray materials. I would say that you have the choice. Okay, in certain case, in certain cases you have choice. In certain cases, because if you use a V-Ray standard material as here, if I plug, if I change back my to to like its original color and copy this one and and here and paste it okay and I render my my scene with the V-Ray material applied okay you'll see that it takes about seven seconds to render now if I apply the standard material to the sphere and re-render my scene normally it would change from 7 to something more so I didn't activate it so let me show you something where you can see the rendering time here so into the very uh, settings and display so into the display and check this box okay if I render my scene We'll see that it takes like eight seconds to render. Okay, eight seconds. So just check this box here. Eight seconds to render. And if I apply the V-Ray material to the sphere, okay, and render it again, it would take less time to render. Okay, it took about six seconds. And in certain cases okay in certain cases applying a, s a simple material a standard material would be more it will be more benefic so here if I for example if I want to, to have highlight here what what we, sh we should do is pick up the specular level and then adjust the glossiness so I get something like this here in the V-Ray material I need to use a reflect like a really low reflect and then play with the reflection glossiness is like and we would have something like this okay and let's render with the V-Ray material applied so just apply it to the sphere and render the scene actually we have no light so I I just want to create one I'm gonna just choose an Omni light standard Omni and create one here okay and I'm gonna use a really cool tool which is the this one here yeah, the place highlight and it will take the light and place it wherever you want so I want the highlight to be there so I wanna use this tool to oops I wanna place the highlight okay into one of these spots oh 
so click and drag onto the sphere so I'm gonna place it a little something somewhere here okay and render my scene and you'll notice that we got here a little point which is the reflection or the glossiness and it took about 10 minutes to render out so and if we use a standard material now okay apply it to the sphere and re-render my scene again I have the same highlight here but in less rendering time and this is the three kings for for getting nice materials uh, nice rendering time and mixing standard and very materials really simple and really cool to use so and back to the V-Ray here in the reflection glossiness what we control is the amount of blur of our reflection so I'm gonna change the color to something mid middle something like this and if we change this amount when it's one we have no no glossiness and this because our surface is really smooth and there is no no problems there so not no problems and V-Ray guess, guesses the GI how it's so it's only the GI working here and if we get down this value what gonna happen the light will be scatterized over the entire object and it's GI and light so if we get this value really down something like this and we render again you'll see that the rendering gonna take some time gonna take some time to render and but we are gonna have some really nice looking material or metal and this is can be used for simulating actual materials and re in real life so this is an idea and here when you click on this unlock button you will unlock the highlight glossiness and then you can mix the two but it can give some things really unrealistic if if we tweak it imagine that you have a fully reflective material with some glossiness and this unrealistic and won't look realistic at all okay you'll never get something like this okay because and same thing if we tweak this and get it to six and this to one you'll never get a blurred material and no glossiness so you have to tweak b this to have nice realistic uh, render so here if I change the subdivision to one you'll see that we have uh, we'll got some grainy reflections uh, and this won't look realistic it's uh, between frosty glasses or frosty glass or something like this that this will be would be a search to result or you would like to have this result and can be you can play with it so I'm not back to one now I'm not talk a little bit about the Fresno reflection which will simulate reflection on the border so if you face the sphere as a parallel to the edge will be reflected and upwards won't to be reflected intersections won't be reflected so if you have something like this it won't be reflected so I don't know if you can imagine but par taking note that parallel objects or lights to, to the sphere will be reflected for the example I'm gonna render up the scene I'm render the scene and what you can see is you have some reflections here on the sides this little red here and to see it clearly I'm gonna just make it more reflective so I have more reflections and here as you can see we have some reflections in the edges of the sphere here and this is what look really re really realistic and when unlocking this you have the Fresnel IOR uh, index of reflection control parameter and the more you go so here I'm just put it to one okay 
so and this to I'm not lock it actually 1.6 and show you another result and you can see that we have fully reflective material but here we don't see uh, the same result without the Fresnel so if we render you can see it clearly and here you have you can see that objects front to the, to the sphere are not reflected and in the edges they are already reflective so this is the the Fresnel reflection so parallel lines will be reflected and the more you get to higher in the front line where the more you will get reflection so it's if it's 100 you'll have a mirror like a mirror like sphere okay this is a little example a little explanation with the reflection is pretty easy to use and really intuitive so I've just to tweak it the exit color would be in this example I'm show you and here in interpolation if I blur my reflection a little bit okay blur them a little bit and deactivated the Fresnel refraction and tried to get something like this and rendered it okay I would like uh, or you can see that it takes some time to render out so what we can do in these cases is using the use interpolation checkbox and it, this is not just a box to check this is a, a whole parameter or a whole rollout so you need to click if, you, if I render you'll see that I, I, I don't get this result at all okay and this probably not realistic at all you can't have such a material but now in the reflect interpolation here what we need to do is adjust the min and rate parameter the min and max rate parameters according to the irradiance map we used and there we're gonna have some nice results okay in the direct elimination we can see that we have irradiance map the minimum rate is minus four okay and the maximum rate is minus three okay if we render our image you're gonna see have a little improvement in the speed and we get pretty same pretty same result okay and this is really nice for blur shadows it, it will give nice results and some gain in in time rendering so okay switch back to the second material which we uh, with here will abort the refraction refraction is the same the more whiter your color the more refractive will be the object as simple as this okay so I'm not just for the sake of for sake of speed I'm not deactivating this the reflect color so also also uh, I didn't mention something if we have here color something like black nearest to if you have white you'll never see the diffuse color okay and we have if you have something mid black or you can see reflection and mid and the diffuse color okay yeah you can see that it's blue same with reflect uh, refraction okay so here I'm not deactivated at all the reflections okay back to reflection and render my scene as you can see it it's really a little bit weird but this is what, we, what he would like probably in real life so if I applied the same material to the sphere if I applied the same material to the sphere here you would see another kind of result and th this because the light is it's bent so we have a ray which is bent and then passes through the object and this is why we got such a result and the how much bend the light will be is controlled by the index of refraction so if we make a completely refractive materials the object will not disappear as many of us think but it will just bend the light ray so if I put the index of refraction to, z to 1 and render my scene objects will disappear 
see because the, the ray light is passing through the object directly it's not even bent so the more you get reflection at uh, the eye where the more your object will be refractive so if you put value to 20 you will get something really crazy something like this and I don't think that there, there are objects that have an index of refraction of about 20 okay for a sci-fi film I think but uh, in real life this w w would look really unrealistic Where have an index of refraction of 133 and if I render my scene you can see that it, it lo changes completely the look of the, the sphere and if I add some reflections a little bit but just a little bit a touch of reflections you can see that we have a nice looking image here this just a lot of parameters that you can play with so and the max depth is how much ray pass through object so if I put it to one I would have a really ugly reflections and these won't look realistic at all so the more depth the more realistic your image would be and the more ranging time it will take as simple as this okay this really cool when when working with some project if for example I take it to 10 and render my scene these would mo look more realistic and we would give another depth to the image and you can see that here we have a nice looking glass image this can be improved by playing with some some materials or some tweakings here or also here the glossiness works as the same with the reflection so don't have to to talk again about it so uh, here I'm not switch it back to one the less the more blurred your reflection would be and the maximum depth is five here if you have noticed here we have the exit color some black areas and this is because of the exit color so the exit color would be another color if we, I change this to green black gr something dark green and render my scene you would see this black areas here becomes green okay so it's very helpful to to search for some errors when you when you render your glasses or objects so you can see where the problem is okay and for example for four colors if I change it I think to something green our object will look pretty much black okay uh, this is really some parameters that you can tweak okay now box uh, let's talk a little bit about the fog multiplier if it's to 12 and change it the color to like purple so back to one and here this what what the fog color would do actually the fog color wha what the fog color do is that it makes thin object look looks less transparent than thick objects and this it could be cool in some sometimes and sometimes not okay so also here you can use the use interpolation option and just adjust it here so pretty easy to understand how it really works so here I'm gonna switch it back and here switch it back same thing for exit colors in the reflection reflection tab now let's see another future feature of V-Ray which is let's say a mid gray refraction which is here the transfer C and uh, pretty much a lot of materials works like this and let's try the hard model here and just render the scene
and you can see that we have sort of between like a candle material here and if I applied the same to the torus knot here oops the torus knot sorry the torus rename this just something like this and if I render again you would see that we get something like candle candle material so we have some transparency here and and this will be just here if I change the f color something like this and render it again you would have this transparent areas would look like this okay pretty nice effect so if you want to and let's see the soft and render again and this how it look like so it's like infusion something melting or you have to experiment this and see how do they work and finally let's see here if I activate my reflection and my reflection glossiness okay something really thin and this is the Anisot anisotropy which will make your object to look more like like a brushed mill okay you could use here bumps or you could use here maps okay and if I apply this material to my sphere and render it this what it will look like we have some blurry reflections and highlights okay and what 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 would make it more realistic is the use of a really black image like like five 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 okay and what happened okay and if we use a high value like o nine you would notice that get something like and the more light you have more accuracy your lighting is more your image would, would look like okay pretty easy simple to understand I think I s speak or pass through all these settings and uh, and parameters I think uh, it's okay we can move on so maps okay here maps as you can see in in any standard material here it's pretty much the same maps okay uh, here here also so bump uh, opacity displacement etc diffuse glossiness frenal anisotropy, anisotropy etc etc so pretty easy to use we can use some of these in the application video or the practical video and I think that's all okay hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something now let's get into the practical video